so this movie came out on June 10th, and I saw it on June 10th. But the reason why I haven't reviewed it till now is because typically when I watch a movie, immediately when the movie's over, I know whether I liked it or hate it, and I more specifically know why I liked or hated a movie. And this movie, Infinite, I didn't like it. But for the first time in probably a long time, if not in my life, I could not figure out why I didn't like this movie. And so it took me until just now to figure it out. And I'm going to get into it now. If you can remember who you were, you will understand who you can become. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Infinite stars Mark Wahlberg, and it's a little bit like Highlander, where it follows basically this general plot of this guy. He he has all of these mental issues, and he, he doesn't know why he, he freaks out all the time. But for some weird reason, like, he knows these things that, you know, he can't explain. And, like, he knows how to make samurai swords without ever studying under a sword maker or, like, researching it or just anything. And come to find out that there is a group of people around the world that they can remember their past reincarnated life at a certain point. Sometimes it's earlier when they were younger, like a little kid. Sometimes it's later in their life, like in Mark Warwick's case with this film. But these people, they can remember every single reincarnated life at a point in their life. And so they have all of these pieces of knowledge and all of these traits and you know, it, it, it's an interesting concept. And there's this bad guy who's trying to end the world. And so that's the general premise to Infinite. And, like, there is a lot of things I like about this movie. The general concept's cool. The um, opening, for the most part, is pretty cool. I, I liked the beginning showing Mark Wahlberg's, like, you know, kind of his life, how he has a history of mental issues, like uh, schizophrenic mental issues. It shows him like making a samurai sword, selling on the black market to get illegal drugs so that he can control his mental issues. And like that whole beginning was good, but there were so many things in this film that I just did not like or just did not work for me. Like, case in point, this film felt so rushed with so many aspects of the plot and aspects of, you know, like, the way they explain things, exposition. Just, it, it felt really rushed. And, I mean, like, I've seen other movies like this about, like, the secret society, you know, like, Kingsmen, Wanted, uh, and, and, like, movies like those, they, they tend to keep good pacing and explain things at a proper pace, but this one just felt kind of messy. And one of the things that I felt was really messy with this film was the main villain. And, like, he's played by, and forgive me, I'm going to murder his name, but uh, Chilete Eforte, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm terrible for pronouncing this guy's name. He was in 12 Years a Slave, he was... In, I believe, 2012, he does good work. He played Baron Mudo, Mordo in uh, Doctor Strange. And, like, he does a good job here. He, he, but the thing was, his character wasn't developed enough. And, like, his grand plan in this film, it didn't feel like we properly got to that with this character or that it was established properly with this character it just kind of felt like he was slapped together and yeah so this guy wants to kill everyone for this reason okay go like can we develop that a little bit better and like that's probably one of my biggest criticisms it's just everything in this movie wasn't developed enough 
Uh, case in point, the female lead. She's good. The only real interesting thing about her is the fact that she's not a love interest for Mark Wahlberg. And that's kind of about it. I mean, like, they don't really develop any of the characters. The only character that probably gets any kind of development is Mark Wahlberg. But, like, you see this little, like, infinite logo right here? So, basically, once he, like, gets introduced to, like, this secret world, every freaking thing has that logo on it, and it makes no sense. Like, so what, you guys franchised? I mean, like, why do your jets and your guns and your clothing all have this stupid little figure eight infinite logo on it? Like, do you have stock options? Like, why do you have this logo everywhere? There's absolutely no need for them to have a logo, especially if they're kind of like a secret group. Like, if they don't want the world to know about them, maybe you should have a logo. <laughs> you know, because a logo is kind of for advertising. You know? Um, so, like, that makes no sense. And, quite frankly, what would have made this movie great, even amazing, is if it wasn't just one movie. Like, so in terms of the story, there's actually kind of like three timelines. There was the 1970s timeline that like has Dylan O'Brien as the main character. And then there's the modern day timeline where Mark Wahlberg is his successor, uh, reincarnated successor. And then there was even another timeline, you know, before or after that. I don't want to spoil it for you. But, and quite frankly... This should have been three films, each following each timeline. Because then you would have had plenty of time to explain everything, flesh stuff out. Not too much out, because you want to keep the pacing good, but like, if you had three hour and a half movies, that would have been probably amazing, especially with this story. Have this grand story of this one guy trying to destroy the world spread out across three films, finally concluding in the third film. And, I mean, that would have made this overall premise so much cooler. You know, you have one movie starring Dylan O'Brien. Then you have the next movie starring Mark Wahlberg. And then the next movie can be, you know, someone else. You know? And that ultimately was probably my biggest criticism. Was just they, they crammed too much into this. Now, don't get me wrong. I liked the pacing. The pacing's good. I feel too many movies don't have good enough pacing, but there is a good balance between having too much in a story and having too slow pacing, okay? And so that, that ultimately was probably my biggest criticism. And like another thing, just showing that there was too much plot into this movie. There's this whole gun subplot. There's like this special gun that's introduced that does a very specific thing. And like, just the way it's introduced way too first not really explained and they should have not done that with this first movie had it in the second film i doubt seriously this is going to get a second film but you know stuff like that and again another thing that's introduced apparently there's like a superpower introduced in this film it's never really explained it's shown a little bit at the beginning it's shown a little bit at the end and it's just like your ancestor believed he could have the power to do more. More what? We're not going to explain it. And so when you're seeing like this power used at the end of the film, it's just like... I don't know what's going on. What, what is that? Are you going to explain that? No? Oh, okay. I mean, and... I mean, and like the superpower didn't even add any real weight to the film. It's like... The film would have concluded the same way if the superpower wasn't used. And so, and like just last but not least, like the training montage. There's a training montage in it. It's nowhere near as good as some better training montages we've seen. And like, it could have been really inventive. Like just trying to get him to remember past lives. 
But no, it's just your generic training montage where they show quick cuts of a guy beating the shit out of the main character, and then the main character gets a little bit better, and like any fights he's in, they don't really ever show him doing anything that he learned in the training montage. And so it's just like, why do we spend so much time on this training montage? It just makes no sense. And so ultimately, Infinite, I keep wanting to call it Infinity because of that E at the end. I know that's not proper, but... You know, Infinite, this could have been a really fun popcorn film. It could have been a good movie. It would have been a really awesome trilogy. But ultimately, it's just really disappointing. I mean, sure, some of the set pieces are fun. But, I mean, if, I, if you told me I never was going to see this movie again, I would not be disappointed. And I hate that, because I like the director. I like Mark Wahlberg, okay? I, I actually enjoy most of the stuff he's in. And so I liked the supporting cast, and just... Ultimately, the script was the weakest part. So, anyway, that's my review of Infinite. And, um... My name's Chris with 11th Hour Reviews. And that is all, unfortunately.